Uh, Sophie Clark, London 354. Thank you, Chair, for calling me. This is the first time I've spoken at Synod. I want to speak in favour of this amendment. I'm 27 and I'm engaged. I'm due to get married in two months' time and I'm absolutely delighted. It's actually currently up in the gallery and has been for the last two days. So if that's not true love, I don't know what is. <laughs> I and my fiancé have never had sex. We are convinced in accordance with scripture that the doctrine of this church is that God's calling for us and for everyone seeking to follow Jesus is to live this way. That sex is to happen only within lifelong union of holy matrimony. I am devastated at the possibility that my leaders and shepherds of this church might now be telling me that our decision to wait, to deny ourselves in order to follow Christ, is unnecessary and is unimportant and is a matter which we can simply agree to disagree. I am disappointed that people I trust to disciple me do not endorse this amendment and by doing so are not encouraging me to follow Jesus and his distinct countercultural call to holiness. The bishops write on page eight of the response, for many years the church has taught that the only rightful place for sexual activity is marriage. The reality within which the church now lives is that couples inhabit their relationships differently. I find these words so depressing and distressing. The bishops have made it clear in their response to LLF that the reality of couples having sex outside of marriage is now a given, rather than one they challenge with Jesus' call to the world to repent and believe. I am so concerned that in seeking to change one thing, the bishops are actually changing a second thing as well. Sex is for marriage. Some here, myself included, believe that marriage is between a man and a woman. Others believe in the possibility of same-sex marriage. But surely what most of us do agree on in this room is that sex is and should be within marriage. I believe that Jesus tells the world a better story about sexuality, relationships and marriage. A story which is for our good and flourishing. We need to make a choice, Synod. Does the church still have a better story to tell? Does it believe in its doctrine? The world says that I'm strange, that I'm not living life to the full, that I'm less human because I'm not yet sexually active. Do you think the same? I am one of the youngest members here, and I am trying to li live out Jesus' better story. I am living in accordance with the church's doctrine, there are hundreds at my church, gay, straight, single, and in relationships, striving faithfully to do the same. Please, please do not make life harder for us. I urge Synod to tell a better story for our church. I urge Synod to not allow these unintended consequences. Sex is for marriage, and I urge Synod to support this amendment. Thank you.